So thanks, Jack, for the very forward-looking talk. I'm going to uh, take it back in time to the here and now. Uh, that was a really good look into the future of NERSC. But today, the resources we have to work with are the core GPU nodes. And so I'm going to give a really high-level overview of how to access them via Cori and the resources that we have available and some of the software um, on the system. So just a couple of slides and then we'll try and get everyone logged in and accessing the GPU nodes via Slurm uh, so that we don't have to eat into the hands-on exercise time later. Okay, uh, so first things first, um, it always helps to read the manual uh, and our information for the GPU nodes for, uh, is on a slightly different website than the standard NERC documentation pages. So, I'd like to point everyone to docs-dev.nurse.gov slash cgpu, which has a couple pages about the nodes themselves, the hardware information, the CPU and GPU information, including uh, some of the node topology people are really interested in, especially for MPI use. Um, it's got instructions as to how to access the nodes via Slurm. Um, it involves a little bit of module shuffling around, and the syntax is slightly different from the usual Cori node access syntax, and we have uh, information about the software on the machine, or on these nodes. Um, again, slightly different than a lot of the standard Cori software that you might be used to working with, and so we've got information about the particular software that we support on the GPU nodes, um, some code examples, both source code and compilation, um, and some kind of frequently asked questions that we get, or have gotten from early access users. Okay, so the most basic thing we'll do, which is um, I'll go through another couple slides and then I'll leave probably 10 to 15 minutes for everyone to, to do this, is to, to get onto the GPU nodes, you'll first want to log into Cori, and then we generally recommend doing a module purge. Um, which gets rid of all of the module files that are loaded by default. This is because um, the Cori GPU nodes have a different operating system and a slightly different software environment than the Haswell and KNL nodes, and so the vast majority of the standard Cori software will not work on the GPU nodes. There are a couple exceptions to this. Um, I think Helen's gonna cover that in detail later, but this is kind of our standard, like, purge all the modules and then load only the ones that you'll need, CUDA, GCC, et cetera. Um, so in addition to having a slightly different operating system, uh, the nodes live in a separate Slurm controller. So we have you purge the modules and then load what's called the ES Slurm module. Um, and so doing this, you'll use the same standard Slurm um, commands, but it talks to a slightly different Slurm controller. It's where if anyone's ever used the uh, transfer QoS, um, you might have used the ES Slurm module. And so the Cori GPU nodes are also um, in the ES Slurm controller. So once you've got those two module steps done, you can, um, what we'll, we'll be using interactive sessions today. And so we'll do an S alloc. Um, the newest thing and the probably, or the most different thing you'll see is uh, the GPU syntax, so dash C, um, if you've used Cori, you'll be familiar with, dash C Haswell or dash C, dash capital C KNL. In this command, I want one node. Uh, in this particular syntax, I'm saying, please give me one GPU, um, and then I would like it for 30 minutes, bill it to this account, and we have the GPU underscore training reservation for today. Um, the project that people are, have temporary access to the GPU nude, nodes under is M3502. Um, so I'll give this a shot in a couple minutes uh, after I've gone through another couple slides, but this is kind of the, the bottom line exercise for, for this short talk. Um, another thing that is different about the Cori GPU nodes from the standard Haswell and KNL nodes is that in some cases on Haswell and KNL, you will use srun, but it's not mandatory per se. But in order for the system to see the GPUs when you're running any given piece of software, so to speak, 
all commands must be run through sron. And so if you're doing a really simple command, so you, you log in and get a GPU node, and you try something like NVIDIA SMI um, without using sron, it's going to tell you, I can't find any GPUs. I have no idea what you're talking about. So this trips me up a lot when I'm, when I'm doing um, development stuff. So this is one key thing to keep in mind for uh, the tutorial later today and trying out any examples is that everything you do should be prefixed with sron, and then that will pick up on uh, the GPU nodes mm -hmm. that you've, the GPUs that you've requested on the node. Um, another thing that I should point out is that requ uh, in requesting the GPUs is that you'll probably want to think about it a little bit differently than Haswell or KNL nodes in terms of resource allocation. So unless you're doing something uh, like specifically requesting a shared QoS or a shared job for a Haswell or a Knight's Landing node, um, you'll get the full node. So you have all the cores, you have all the resources on the node. This is not true for the core GP nodes. Um, we don't have a lot of them relative to the number of users that we have. And so the core GPU nodes are shared by default. And so what that means is that um, we kind of anticipate that users will be good citizens and request only what you need. So for small examples, you'll want to do just one GPU. Every node has eight GPUs on them. And the small examples we have today, I think uh, one should be sufficient. Helen, do you have any multi-node, multi-GPU? OK, yeah. <laughs> Um, so we, we, we ask kindly that uh, people restrict themselves to one GPU so that, they're, um, so that everyone is able to access the resources simultaneously. Um, and so that's just another thing to keep in mind because it's, it's a different way of thinking about how you access the resources on the machine. Um, as I alluded to before, we have a software page on our um, documentation site for the nodes where we warn users that only some modules on the system will work with the core GPU nodes, but the vast majority of the modules, uh, software modules won't. Um, so the compilers that are available for use of the GPU nodes are GCC, the PGI compiler, which Jack talked about, the Intel compiler, and LLVM can be used. Um, the GPU nodes support MPI via OpenMPI and MVAPH2. Um, Helen later will be talking about using OpenMP and OpenACC directives. Uh, we have a couple different versions of the CUDA SDK available on the nodes. And also, um, I know a lot of people are interested in machine learning, and we have modules for TensorFlow and PyTorch. Um, I think today we're going to be mostly focusing on OpenMP, OpenMP OpenACC, and CUDA examples. Um, CUDA C, CUDA Fortran, and I have uh, one small Python example. Um, and so please let us know if people are interested, I guess, in TensorFlow or PyTorch for a future um, future tutorial. OK, so this is the time for the login exercise. So we'll have everyone do login and get a local copy of the training materials, and then also try and log into a GPU or um, request a GPU. And then, so I'll just kind of float around, I guess, for the rest of the, the time for this talk. I want to make sure that everyone is able to do what they need to do. So since we only have an hour for the hands-on exercise, exercises this afternoon, um, and there's a lot of material in the hands-on exercises. So I think that's it for my slides, and uh, if there's any questions, but if not, please try to do the login exercise and uh, give us a shout if, we've, if you run into any issues. This director has a readme file, and you can follow how to use the like uh, how to compile, and especially when you at long time, how do you get the reserved you know, notes? You add it on to a special uh, training repo. Super basic question: Do the various compilation things have to happen on the GPU node, or can they be done on a normal Cori node and then just run on the GPU? 
question. Um, generally, as long as you do, as long as you do the module purge and then load only the specific modules you want, you can do the cross compilation on something like a login node. Um, but in general, we suggest that people um, compile compile things on the GPU nodes. But I, you can you can usually successfully cross compile things. So standard practice is to s alloc first and then do everything else. Yeah, I usually do the module purge and then so load module purge, module load ES learn, and -alloc. then do the s alloc and do your compilation and then um, test your code. Okay, nice. Chip. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs>